Okay, I think because of the insubordination, Poe and Finn come up with this plan, I think is a Swiss cheese plan. By, the, by that, I mean there's a bunch of holes. Like there's a bunch of ways in which this thing would totally fail. Just give it to me one more time, simpler. The First Order is only tracking us from one destroyer, the lead one. Blow that one up. Why? Why would they only follow one? Like you, you would put a tracker in every ship. For sure. And I, I would think they would also have a person manning a console. Like, oh, that's right. it's gone from green to red. That's right. The First Order has got lots of people in it. Like, they got yeah. lots of tech, they got lots of weapons, they got lots of people. They just have one stand there and watch it. That's right. Like, what's the... What's the problem? Hmm. Disable the tracker. Hmm. Our fleet escapes before they realize. If your fleet can jump. Well, if they can, the fleet can only make one jump, right? Mm -hmm. And if the direction the fleet goes is where they end up, if they can't make a second jump. It's hard for them to overcome the vector problem where right. a person visually looking at the fleet could tell, well, they've gone in that direction. We just need to search that direction. You search that direction. Yeah. So you need to make a second jump. So you go first jump, they know where you're, the line you're on, then you stop, make a second jump, and now they can't track you. Right. So they've done some cold protocol stuff. <laughs> exactly. The cold protocol. That's exactly right. Yep. And I don't think they have enough fuel for a single jump. So it sounds like this plan won't even work anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, so it's like three people that have just been kicked out of their jobs. I guess, yep. I guess Finn never had a job. Poe has been demoted and like shoved away and Rose was guarding the escape pods. So it's like they came up with this harebrained plan, like with a bunch of assumptions that they are pretty sure is how it works. But like, what if it's not how it works? What I, if they, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, where is Rose getting the confidence to be like, I'm going to go from my pretty low level job to, plan for the rescue of the fleet like where does this i know how stuff from? i know how stuff works inside the fleet like how, how would you know this she's not she's not a soldier or an infiltrator she's not an intel she's not a spy she got a connection on the inside that's leaking her information like i never even thought about that but damn they just trust her yeah yeah they met like an hour ago that's right. And and Finn got tasered. Got attacked by her. By her. <laughs> and he still wants to leave. And he did a complete 180. He's like, I wanted to go from leaving to high risk suicidal high risk mission. Suicide, infiltration, sneaky stuff. I have no I have no practice in sneaky stuff skills. Mm -hmm. And who am I teaming up with? Somebody who is just on watch just, just for attack just attack on watch on the escape pods. Right. It's literally There's, like baby, the, the, like the most babysitting job possible. Like just, just sit by the escape pods and make sure people don't leave. This, and Poe, why is Poe trusting plan. these two? This is their big plan that they spend a lot of time doing. <laughs> We're along for the ride. Oh, man. Just, just ready to fall apart. Ready to fall apart. Okay, and then they get there and... And Rose is all inconsistent about how she hates these people, mm -hmm. but then she loves it. it... Mm -hmm. This place it's... is great. It is great. Okay. It is pretty great. Fabiers. I've never seen a real one. Look, this whole place is beautiful. I mean, come on. Why do you hate it so much? And who do you think these people are? There's only one business in the galaxy that'll get you this rich. Selling weapons to the First Order. I could put my fist through this whole lousy, beautiful town. I mean, is the only way to get wealthy through selling weapons to the First Order or to anybody? I mean, is there not, say, a farmer making That's right. food? That's like, right. You know, like, can't he get wealthy through farming? Yeah, maybe someone settled the planet very early and then they made it into a farm so they have the agricultural output of an entire planet. I bet you can get real rich like that. Yeah, why not? Or how about uh, a merchant selling, I don't know, toys to children? Oh, can't you gosh. get Can't you get wait, 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 wealthy wait, 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 that back, way? Go back to my farming scenario. Okay. So if you go back to farms, 
someone's making a lot of food and a portion of that goes to the war effort. So that is indirectly a way of contributing to the war. Even if you're not selling food directly to the soldiers or to the military organizations, you're alleviating the costs that it would take for those organizations, those militaries, in order to feed all their soldiers. So e that, that is also contributing to the war effort. True. But what about, okay, what about the selling toys to children? A merchant selling toys to children. There's, there's no way that is, that's an ethical lifestyle. You're helping uh, the children. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, okay, but what toys did you play with as a kid? Like I had them super soakers. I played laser tag, like that is indirectly training soldiers to be soldiers. I mean, heck, I have even heard that it was like some, some video game in the 2000s was, was like paid for by the army to teach squad tactics and it was a sec effectively a recruiting game for the army like and so that person isn't manufacturing weapons but they're manufacturing soldiers and i think they made money from it okay 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 i mean <laughs> okay 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 what if you're a charity worker but you're not gonna yeah. get wealthy with charity yeah unless okay. the charity is making weapons <laughs> 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 just handing out weapons what about what about the the person who runs this casino they're just making money on gambling they can get wealthy that way they're not selling guns i see what you're saying but the people that make guns are having a good time here and they're like living lavish lifestyles which makes them relaxed and comfortable and, and feel good <laughs> from their vacations so when they go back to the factory they can run at full efficiency Right? I mean, sometimes you is... get sometimes you get a mental block. You got to step right. away from your work. You get writer's block. You get your engineer block. You walk away. You go. You do something fun. And when you come back, you get this great idea. Great idea. Oh, I can make this weapon so good, so good. It's like a thousand times more killer than before. That's what this place is. I mean, the the military is supported by the entire economy. I can't, everything is in some sense supporting the military. Yeah, and so, so what saying is true. What she's saying is true. It's just always true. And she should be I punching a hole through herself because any job she might do is in fact she is supporting the military she works for the military yeah <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah she yeah she is she needs the weapons which is then making these people rich so i see i see that you are conflicted <laughs> from your initial <laughs> position and i think rose is too like she says here that it's like a terrible place mm -hmm. but look at her riding these dogs <laughs> Stop enjoying this! Stop enjoying this! <laughs> like, like, 20 minutes ago, she's like, this place is awful, this is evil, like, all the bad people are here, and then she's here having a blast. Well, that's because Finn... Finn from the start. Finn from the start's like, this place is awesome. It is. But Finn likes gambling, which Rose yeah, says right. is bad. But then the animals, she likes. So she's allowed to like that. Finn's not allowed to like his stuff, because that's bad. But those animals wouldn't be there without the gambling. Yeah, but stuff I like is morally righteous and good. Stuff anybody else likes that I don't like is wrong, bad, and terrible. I see it. Mm -hmm. That's why the taser that she, in her pocket that she used on Finn, that's fine. That's fine. That's totally she, fine. She, she totally fine. goes up to a guy in the casino. She's like, hey, do you sell these? She's like, yeah, I got a bunch. She like, opens up his jacket. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the actual the guy that sells the, the, the tasers. Yeah, he's fine because he sold a weapon to Rose and everything she will do with it is fully justified. Hmm. So... No problem. I think what you're saying is selling weapons is okay as long as it goes to Rose. So Rose or really me. just needs or to me. change. Oh, okay. So <laughs> bo both of you, both of you just need to change your careers. Just it's all square after that. Just put Rose at the top of the hierarchy and only sell weapons to her organization. And then everything's fine. That's right. She's no longer making weapons of war. She's making weapons of peace. A peace enforced she's enforcing peace with weapons you want a piece of this bra, bra, bra. Bra, My name's bra. Rose. it's peaceful now without him here gosh rose she, rose. she really is the villain oh okay <laughs> Isn't that, i, that's I would have gone with naive i wouldn't say the villain <laughs> even naive people make mistakes sometimes it costs an entire planet because of rose because of Rose. Rose has this remote fuel gauge. First off, why does Rose have it? And is the 
rebellion transmitting their fuel status? What is going on? Okay, so they're on Canto Bite. Canto Bite. The fleet is running on fumes. Well, how does she know that? So, 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 okay. Wait, <laughs> does, so, probably, probably not everyone in the rebel fleet has a little monitor for, for the fleets as a whole's mm -hmm. fuel reserve. Yeah. Why does she have one? And how is, she, how is this information getting to her wrist? Like, that means it's broadcasting. This means it's broadcasting from the fleet how much fuel they have. But that means that if it's broadcasting, then the First Order knows how much there is. Right. Why Even would you tell the First Order that? It says it's encrypted, so they can't read it. There's still a transmission. Right. Yeah, all you need to do is crack the code. Why don't you just right. not transmit it at all? Right. So maybe maybe she programmed her little doo -doo 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 yeah, to do some volume. sort of just like she knows the rate of fuel use, and so she just has it diminished, okay. so it's a guess. That's true. As long as they're not speeding up or slowing down, then yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although... Why does such a low-level person have knowledge of the fuel status? Now you wouldn't want to you want to compartmentalize that information. You don't want everybody knowing your fuel situation. Mm -hmm. It could be okay. It could be okay that she's a low-level person with the knowledge of the fuel status. Maybe she's just that happens to be her job. Her job is okay. fuel monitor. Or... She is down in the bowels of the ship. Maybe yeah, she right. just knows. Right. Okay. Okay. Gosh, I wonder what happened because there's, there's got to be someone that cleans like every room, right? Like someone, right? So then I wonder if they encounter secret stuff like because they got to clean the room, right? Well, I mean, if if a person is in charge of cleaning secret rooms, they better have clearance. But in right? that case, you may be a low level, like low ranking person, but yeah. actually have knowledge of this secret -y stuff. That's right, but then you would we adhere to the rules of <laughs> not, no information. Not bring it out to you to a gambling planet <laughs> on your wrist. <laughs> yeah, that's not because even if it's just her programmed without broadcast, if she gets captured, which she gets captured, and they find this, now they know this, the fuel status of the fleet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Rose. Rose, what is going on here? Finn and Rose, well, they tear up the town. And then they justify it. Let's, let's tear, listen. Up, tear up, not tear up the town as in like the colloquial meaning of like have a good time. They like actually damage the town. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. They damage the town. It was worth it though to tear up that town, make them hurt. So okay, it's worth so it to tear up the town so that they can make the town hurt. That's right. And the reason it's justified to make the town hurt, even for you know, toy merchants, even for farmers, even for just yep. a visitor who's gambling is because the economy is based on running guns to the first order. Mm -hmm. So even people who are farmers supporting the the whole apparatus, they are justified targets is what they're saying. Yeah, the whole town is a justified target. Yeah. Just make them hurt. In fact, we don't have the we meaning the rebellion don't have the ability to take them head on so yeah. any asymmetric attack we may do to make them hurt just fine right yeah i mean we're not attacking the soldiers or the commanders or the, even the politicians but what we're doing is making the the economic people the manufacturers the makers of things afraid mm -hmm. of us for what they've done yeah. to our rebel cause we're the yeah. outliers in society right we need to show them that they need to listen to us. And as long as the regular people feel the pain that the rebellion is feeling, it's justified to let them know the war has come to their doorstep. And we will do it by any means necessary, make them feel the pain. And it's justified, it's justified. They're hurting us, supporting the first order. Is, is this the light side? <laughs> is, it, is, is this it, the light side? This, this is just terrorism. That's just terrorism. That's just straight terrorism. <laughs> Kylo Ren and and um, Daisy Ridley. Kylo Ren Ray. and Ray. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they get in, they're in this dyad. They have like this yeah. connection in the Force, and they have this real emotional heart to heart. But what what was weird is that 
Ray only knew Han. Like I watched these movies back to back. Ray only knew Han for like three days, but yep. she's like really emotionally connected to Han. Why did you hate your father? Why did you hate your father? Give me an honest answer. You had a father who loved you. He gave a damn about you. Why? Why did you kill him? Like that's a strong reaction for a guy I've only known for three days. Like, oh, I see what you're saying. I always interpreted this as she doesn't know Han very well. Okay. But her family abandoned her, and she's pissed at Kylo for for killing his her father who stayed and loved him. So she's actually pissed. Oh, just doesn't she, care about okay, Han. So, it's so it's just like okay, it's just like when you see like a rich person like crash a Ferrari and like yeah, it's fine. I'll just switch my Lamborghini. Like, heck, f you, dude. <laughs> like, like. Yeah you're you're taking things for granted mm -hmm. so she never had parents and she sees another person murder her fa his father and she's Gosh. like f you like f you okay i see what you're saying i get it and i see how it's not really about her relationship with han it's the mm -hmm. fact that he's a father figure and kyler runs throwing away uh -huh. that means that like that relationship that that father child or i guess parent child relationship mm -hmm. like it's like right under the surface for her like she's able to get emotionally just spiked up after only knowing this guy for like three days right and so yeah. she's like she sees him die and she and she's like carrying this emotion away because that's just that's, that's that's her problem that's like her key character problem that she didn't have father mother growing up okay I mean, it make it kind of makes sense that that she's had a really tough childhood yeah. with abandonment issues, and who knows what kind of trauma from all the ways she's been treated. To have that, that would be at the surface of your mind all the time, wouldn't it? I mean, it would affect the decisions I make all the time. I mean, I mean even, even if it wasn't for if even if it wasn't at the surface of my mind or your mind, this argument demonstrates that it's the surface of her mind. That's right. And in Cause, fact, cause, she may not even be aware that it's at the surface of her mind. Which is she okay, may just, I mean, yeah. she may be reacting in a way that feels natural to her. And that is at the surface. She just doesn't, she's not aware that that's what's motivating, motivating her. She right. might say, I liked Han, you killed him. I'm mad at you for killing Han, but really it's about her childhood. Something like that. I mean, she, she, she does not say that. She actually directly says, you had a father, I didn't. Right. I mean, let's, 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 let's listen. Let's listen. Let's listen. Why did you hate your father? Why did you hate your father? Give me an honest answer. You had a father who loved you. He gave a damn about you. Why? Why did you kill him? I mean, she said it right there. You had yeah. a father. He gave a damn about you. So she has some awareness of what's mm -hmm. motivating her, I think. And she's not. She's not arguing about light side, good, dark side. What's mm -hmm. better for the good of the galaxy? She's going after Kylo Ren for not loving his dad like, like it, it's right there in her like, it's right there in her character and her personality and it makes sense yeah I, i'm on board yeah. it makes sense and we're gonna talk about this later too but i think this is not explored enough as the, her character because this is a really really tough thing like, to come to grips emotional. with deeply emotional deeply traumatic as a person to over i don't know like the word overcome but like Accept, to wrestle to deal with, with to wrestle figure with, out. whatever words figure you want out. to use. Yeah. That would be tough, man. Yeah, it really should be at the core of many of her decisions. That's right. Yoda, he says this line, failure is the greatest teacher. And I think in many ways it's true. The greatest teacher, failure is. Ah, like how he failed to stop the Sith from overtaking the, the, the society. Yeah, how he failed to see Count Dooku for the Sith Lord he was. Gosh, Count Dooku was his Padawan. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like Count Dooku was some random Jedi. It was mm -hmm. his student. Yeah. Oh, another failure was Yoda not seeing that the Chancellor was, was the, the Dark Lord. He also like allowed Hunter. Anakin to kill all the younglings. He didn't even become a Jedi at all. That's right. Oh, he when the going got tough... And the uh, the Republic was on the ropes. He mm -hmm. fled. He left. That's right. He just was, abandoned. Yeah. Did he learn from his failure when he ignored the ethical crisis of having a clone army? He 
he also failed by not enforcing the rule of, um, what is it? You can't be above, what, two, three years old to be, start your tr Jedi training? Yeah, he just let Anakin go through. He's all right. Let Anakin he's go like, through. The council voted. It's fine. Like, we have these strong rules that we've had for, like, thousands of years. And he's like, that's all right. Let's let him in. Let's let him in. And then the galaxy suffers tremendously because of that decision. That's right. But maybe he's learned now that he's a ghost. And he's like, my watch is over. Like, I'm dead already. Like, that's all right. I, like, I learned all my lessons. Well, it's like everyone else's problem. Also, if, mass, if failure is the best teacher... This guy's the number one master. This guy's the master. He's the built the galaxy one. more than anyone else. <laughs> not only the not only the number of failures, but the magnitude of the failures. Mm -hmm. Just he's got to be number one. Democracy is gone, like totally gone. Right, and the empire fell. First order is back. That's right. Yoda's not even helping, as even though he's a force ghost at this point, he's not even helping the fledgling New Republic get on its feet. So as a force ghost, I have to imagine that he's able to just teleport himself to anywhere he wants, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which means he could he could get plans. He could like figure out where things are going and then just relay that information back to the rebels. Is he doing that? Mm -mm. He's just checked no, out. He's, just, he's checked out. He's like, I need more knowledge. I need more knowledge. I need more. I just I, I'm not. There's just so many things I need to learn. So I need to I need to go through the next failure. I mean, I like Yoda. He's like the strongest Jedi. He's super mm -hmm. cool, super old, super wise. Mm -hmm. He's and he's got those super cool flip fighting style. But at the same time, like he he was the leader. He was the leader of all the Jedi, and he let all this happen. He let so much happen. The failure, the greatest teacher. The greatest teacher. He learned a whole lot. He's also got some weird wisdom here, mm -hmm. like. So I call it monotonic mastery, which is brutal standards. Let's see how his explanation. I'll explain what it means. Luke, we have what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. So we are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. So that means that means to be a master, your student has to become better than you. Yep. But like that. So that means that your your mastery, your students always have to become better. Like there can never mm -hmm. be a generation that's just not as good as the previous master, because that means that guy the previous generation was not a master so if, but also that means that in order to be a master all i need is for my student to do better than me that's right that's so right. i i suck at drawing i've never practiced it never tried i'm not interested in it if but i would could teach, teach some I, if i taught somebody how to draw and then they get better than me which is going to happen rapidly yeah, yeah yeah like i'm a master they grew beyond me that's right so like when I was when I was a kid, I was ten years old. I was teaching mm -hmm. like the neighborhood kid, like he was he was two years younger than me, so eight mm -hmm. years old. I was teaching him how to play baseball, but then after that season, I never played again. But then he did, and he got real good, mm -hmm. which basically means I'm a master at baseball. You're a master. In fact, you're his master, and the reason he was successful is because of you. That's right. That's the burden of mastery is that my student got better than me. That's right. It's just a, fact, it's such a brutal standard. Like your your student has to be better than you to be a master. That's the weight it, you carry. That's the burden you carry. And that's true. That's very emotional. It feels great. But it's like every student has to be better. Otherwise, you like nullify your previous master's mastery. Like brutal. It's so hard. That's right. That's right. You would start In gaming fact, the system. You start the gaming system <laughs> like I'm going to be better by my master just a little bit so I can give my student some wiggle room. <laughs> so they they have space right. to grow. This is like when you're at a, when you're at a job and they do like the... Uh, Every year they do some sort of yearly review and you have to create your goals and right. so you sort of game your goals so that you can always surpass them when the year review comes around. So they're, right. they're playing these games probably. Like I could the probably Jedi. get a, I could probably pull off a 10% growth, but I'm gonna make it a 2%. That way I have 8% for next year. Like that's, that's what they're that's doing. Right. That's right. That's right. And if I'm going to train somebody, you know, I don't, I don't want to get too good because then they won't be able to surpass me and I don't want them to get too good. Because then their who they're their training won't be good enough, and I need a right. chain of mastery. Right. I'm just going to game the system. <laughs> is this what Every, happened? Bureaucratic rot inside the Jedi Order. Is that what happened? A race to the bottom. Race to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best master. But you're terrible. But I'm the best. I'm the best master because I was so bad and made my student better. But better. Only a little bit. Only a little bit. Like, look, even the even that guy, he's better than me. Master. 
I would just be really terrible at everything I could and teach people. <laughs> like Sorry. teach people like, oh, here's this origami crane, isn't it? The edges are all messed up. Like you yeah. try. Yeah. And then they get better than you. You're like, master. I'm like, ah, I'm a master. <laughs> so this is, so some of the themes in The Last Jedi are a little weird because here we're saying in this scene, I forget this code breaker's name, but the code breaker is saying that the rebels in the first order, essentially the same. They both buy weapons. What's the difference? Let's listen. At least you're stealing from the bad guys and helping the good. Good guys, bad guys. Let's see who formerly owned this gorgeous hunk. Arms dealer made his bank selling weapons to the bad guys. I'm the good. It's all a machine, partner. Live free, don't join. I mean, let's say Nazi Germany and the United States. Okay. okay. So Nazi Germany is buying weapons, therefore they're bad. The United States mm. also buying weapons, therefore they're bad. They're the same. It's the same. No, it's the same. You know, you know, they're both buying weapons. They both have to worry about this weapons supplies. Like, who cares? It's the same. It's like, a machine. Let me check out and I'll never be affected. You 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 put you put up a Craigslist ad for a hunting bow and an IED like it's the same like that's the same level like it is both it's weapons. The same. It's a weapon. Okay, but checking out so that you're not a part of it, that's just that's a guaranteed way for you to just get a new overlord when when which either team A wins or team B wins and then they come to you like, "Hey, you sat mm -hmm. out. Well, I'm in charge of you now." That's right. Now, I guess in the galaxy, you might be able to find some way to navigate in a free sort of way without being yes. under like authority a, like too much. On a border planet that's like barely functioning, yeah. I guess so. But if, if you wanted to participate in society, this is important distinctions between different people buying weapons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's weird that there's not, they're not the same. The rebellion and the first order, the first order does all kinds of bad stuff. Gosh. Rose talks about the first order shelling her town. The rebellion wouldn't do that. They're not the same. I mean, I guess from this guy's perspective, who he's fairly like on the outside of society, mm -hmm. from his perspective, everyone's the same. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad. Sure. But I feel like to the people <laughs> that want to live outside of the First Order, the First Order is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I guess for the people that are inside the First Order, is the First Order good? No, no, no. That yeah. can't be true. Because, because, because we see stormtroopers defecting because they don't like it. Right. I think I think in some of the the games and some of the lore in Star Wars, the Republic gets corrupt enough that the authority of the the dark side becomes nice appealing. to have. Okay, appealing, I can see it. appealing. Because, because if, I can brings... imagine it like if you're in the Republic and you're like the politicians get rich and I'm super poor, they're doing bad stuff, and then you come in, you see the 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 dark side. They're like, these are the rules. There's two of us. Mm -hmm. People are bad. We do, we, for, we do, we yeah. kill them. That's good. Yeah. And like, oh, okay, it's more forced equality between people. The rich are brought down, the, the poor elevated. Like I can see the appeal. Um, now then they would probably, you know, fall into evil and torture and all kinds of stuff. But. I mean, to be fair, we just justified the, the Rose and Finn doing terrorism. So <laughs> maybe it's, maybe it's actually kind of okay <laughs> also also the first order is so big compared yep. to the rebellion the rebellion has got what thousands of people maybe right. tens of thousands at the beginning of the movie right that the amount of weapons that the first order need versus the number of weapons that the rebels need is just it's just so different They're different you're gonna make yep. way more money selling to the first order they probably have the the banking the financial system all of that in place to buy weapons whereas the rebellion what it's going to be hard to make money. Scrap credits. S scrap credits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I guess both sides are the same, so don't worry about mm. it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry I mean, about we it. We justified terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Poe's mutiny. And from my perspective, Poe was justified going against Admiral Holdo because she showed very poor leadership. 
Let's watch. So a stormtrooper and a who now are doing what? They are trying to save us. You have bet the survival of the resistance on bad odds and put us all at risk. You have to give Finn and Rose all the time that you can. There's no time now. To load the transport. Yeah, I was afraid you'd say that. Vice Admiral Holdo, I am relieving you of your command. I mean, Poe is running around like looking for leadership. Like, are you a leader? Are you going to help me? Are you a leader? Are you going to help me? Are you a leader? There's no leadership. Do I have to do this? Okay, I'll do it. See. I, I have to. I, I want the rebellion to see. I have to do this. So, I mean, from his he, perspective, it's justified. I, I think he still is the commander of the air wing. So, like, yep. even though there's only a few of them, right? Which means he's not some low-level person. Like, he's not right. so low that you can be like, just shut up and move the things. Like, this is what mm -hmm. you're hired to do. So if even at that level, if he's not being included in not decision making, but at least knowing what the decision is, then then, yeah, you're serious questions about what is our leadership doing? And if you mm -hmm. see see the leadership repeatedly making decisions that are like losing the war effort, then if you believe in the cause, then that, that, that you want the rebels to survive, then mutiny might be correct, because from Poe's perspective, Holdo is incompetent. Yeah, and this is a sort of small rebellion with the hierarchy is not so clear cut like a huge military organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there is some wiggle room to depose leadership if they're not doing a good job, especially if the new leader comes in and is able to set the, set everything straight. Gosh, yeah. What if Poe came in and like and everything was run really tight, and then the the war effort was fantastic? Right. It could that would be a justified mutiny. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I guess also, if we, if we can we can meta game it, is that that no matter what, the mutiny is justified because right? because if your team yeah. wins, then you're like, if if, if Poe comes yeah. in, he does a great job, and then in the history books, it's like, yeah, he threw out the bad leader and then did a good job leading. Right. right. So and same. then if and if Holdo wins, she's like she put down a rebellion. It was a sign of strong leadership. Right. You know, she put down the rebellious elements and moved us toward a brighter future like whoever wins the rebellion whoever uh, the rebellion within the rebellion is going to yeah. write the history books so right win as long as they survive and yeah. from what it looks like from Poe's pers perspective is that Holdo is going to get everyone killed yeah so maybe I mean, and i can gosh, feel it just if she could just include him and give him a little bit of knowledge about what's going on mm -hmm. then i don't think he would have been pushed to do this right she didn't even, say she's trying to compartmentalize information about the plan. And she mm -hmm. could say, I can't tell you the whole plan because I don't want to give the information out to everybody. Mm -hmm. But we have a plan. Here's what I think you and the air wing need to do yeah. to get to get us moving forward. Can this, I'm going to put you in charge. Please go do it. And I'm also looking for you to be a leader soon. So I'm looking for you to step up and be able right. to do these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then come back with any questions you have. I may or may not be able to answer them. I'm open to listening. Gosh, and it'd also be very easy to limit his information. You say, we think we have a spy, so I can't tell you everything. Right. And yeah. please don't tell all your pilots everything as well that I tell you. Right. Get them working. Like, there's an avenue there where she doesn't have to tell the plans details, but also comes across as a competent leader. Maybe Holdo did something really heroic when she was earlier in her Ripple career. And so then they promoted her up, but she never really had the leadership training or talent, maybe. Well, she was mentored by Leia. And Leia has <laughs> Oh no. Oh, no. No. Leia. Okay. Lighthearted. Uh, Ray got a costume change. She yep. she changed her clothing. But yeah, so so before that she was on this planet with uh with here's here's Luke. Luke, Luke, tickling your fingers, and she had she had this clothing, and then in the next scene she's here. Mm -hmm. So it's, I guess she had outfit change. It's not weird that she changed, because it makes sense. You, you when you travel, you pack some luggage and you change your clothes all the time. What's weird is nobody else is changing their clothes. That's a weird thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Kylo has a closet full of this black outfit, just, just yep. hanger after hanger of the same thing. Holdo wears the same thing every day. Every day. Yeah, she's the only one that got a, uh, an outfit change. Weird. Weird. It's really weird. 
Okay. Can I, maybe 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 she knew she was gonna see Kylo, so she wore something darker because she's like, I know he likes dark clothing, so you know, I, That's I, right, I, yeah. same similar and style. It's, it's gray. Thing. Just let him know. I'm kind of yeah, little. I'm a little bit sell on me. the edge. You gotta sell okay. me on this okay. stuff. <laughs> There's a little bit of darkness in me, but you know, I mean, I'm yeah. still you know kind of light. Got some light bandages here. <laughs> But I can be tempted. Okay, Admiral Holdo, we've been talking smack, but I, I really like the scene. Like, she's got some tactical awareness. Oh! Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. So, this was pretty cool because so that means that she knows what's on the ship. She knows the deck. Mm -hmm. She knows that this is a hose that you can kick without like killing everyone in front of you. And she yep. had a blaster somewhere. <laughs> Like her her dress is very form fitting, but she yep. had a she had a blaster holstered somewhere, and somewhere. she like in a quick smooth like quick smooth action she kicks the hose, <laughs> busts it open, like directed at this guy, pulls out her blaster and like, bam, and it's non lethal and it's like it's not just a, like a laser like a like a single point. She chose this like conical thing that like shoots this ring out like wipe out an entire not wipe out but like it, it stun everyone around yep. in front of her. Yeah, super smart. Well done. And she like timed it right. This is the distraction. Like very good. And then also, yeah. also this door, cool door. Cool door. Like this three way sided thing. It is, it's interesting that they designed the door that way. Why? I wonder why. God, these pocket doors, mechanical pocket doors. If that thing broke, like a gear got worn out in the mechanism somewhere in the wall. Oh, oh my God. God. You're saying okay. So first of all, pocket doors. Pocket doors are one of these doors that like the the door slides into the wall. It slides into yep. the pocket in the door. You're saying if there's a gear that's broken in there, you have to take apart the wall to get to it. Yeah. You can't just you can't just fix like the the pivots. Like oh yeah, this is a mess. But I think I think the it makes sense to do these these like gate doors, mm -hmm. especially a three sided gate door. Is if you okay. have a decompression. If you decompression, these things can close real fast. Okay. Although I think they lose a lot of strength because the wall is now hollow and this doesn't latch into anything. They just, they just like sandwich into each other. Right. And those are the, the, the meeting points where they come together. Mm -hmm. They're going to be weaknesses. So yeah. somehow they have to lock in, but it's still weaker than if it was just a solid door. Yeah. This, can this, Super, is this Padma Haldo. Super cool. Yeah. She so also did the video game maneuver where she, throws down the smoke yeah you can see and then she emerges <laughs> and then done smoke comes out Bam. before they get before they can shoot mm -hmm. she had aimbot through the smoke yeah she dropped down one of those tactical tell tells you where the enemies are things a little ping radar <laughs> okay so so after that they the Command rebels, the, mm -hmm. the rebel, they get into the bridge and they hold these people hostage. What I notice is C three three O C three PO's fingers are chunky. Mm -hmm. Like I don't remember them being this chunky. I guess I've never really thought about C three PO's fingers. Mm -hmm. But imagine how 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 does how does C three PO interact with anything around the world? Like you can't like pick up stuff. And like imagine you're like super smart, you can talk to anyone, but Anakin's like, here's your fingers that you can't grab anything with. Yeah, so if you look at our fingers, right, if there's soft padding on the underside so we mm -hmm. can grab things, his his is like a cylinder. And so there's like an edge where you'd want the fingertip to grab things. Right. So he can only like push flush on a screen with the metal. And, and so not only not only this, the soft pads in your fingers, but the size of your fingers are the, gosh, the right size for your hand. That, that sounds yeah. weird. Because, like, of course, that's your hand. What I'm saying is, like, if his they're fingers fat. are this, or they're so fat, he can't grab his hand around right. things. Like, right. you're, you're, like, if you had fingers that were super long, then yeah, you, then then the aspect ratio mm -hmm. would be okay for him to grab yeah. stuff. But here, they're just kind of stubby, can't articulate things right. with them. You're not gonna. His his sort of fingers are sort of stuck in this yeah. sort of motion, and, and not only stuck there's not enough articulation points there's not enough like connections they're just they're just too big like that's yeah what yeah. The, the things he could grab would be cylinders that are very thin mm -hmm. like he's not gonna pinch things with three fingers like they need to be finer tips yeah so he essentially has mittens can you imagine how frustrating that would be to be like 
Anakin, creator, what did you make me for? Like, here's your mittens. Never touch things. <laughs> like, you, know, like, <laughs> hey, you can't even, you can only grab on to very specific things, too. <laughs> yeah. Just translate. Don't touch things. Here's your mittens yeah. that are in your hands over forever. Yeah, no help to yeah, anyone. I just never noticed that about his hands. Yeah. I, I don't think he was like that in the, the originals or the sequel trilogies. I'm not sure. I have to go back and look. I have to go back and look. Although I don't remember him actually even having fingers. Like, That's he always like I this. Remember. I don't remember. I don't, I don't recall. I don't, I don't recall. remember. Anyway, big fingers. Mm -hmm. That would be annoying. Like, imagine... Oh gosh. Yeah, so one, imagine if your fingers always with popsicle sticks. They don't articulate well. Yep. And then... Yeah, just wrap them up with like socks and then you can't grab stuff. And we finally learn the real plan from Holdo. Well, Leia communicates the real plan with some that underling woman, but this was Holdo's plan. We finally learn it now. Let's watch. What is that? The mineral planet Crate, an uncharted hideout from the days of the rebellion. That's a rebel base? Abandoned but heavily armored, with enough power to get a distress signal to our allies. Holdo knew the First Order was tracking our big ship. They're not monitoring for little transports. So we could slip down to the surface unnoticed and hide till the First Order passes. That could work. She was more interested in protecting the light than she was seeming like a hero. Okay, 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 okay. First, first thing, first thing, Holdo knows that the... the First order is only tracking the capital ship. Yep. How, how does she know that? Like, she, I, even if you knew that, how much confidence are you going to have that the first order won't be adapting and looking for smaller escape ships? And in it's fact, that's exactly what happens. They see the escape ships yeah. and then shoot them. And then shoot them. So, what the heck? Also, the person, I don't remember this blonde woman's name. The, mm -hmm. the, I don't know, she's like the a bridge officer or somehow yeah yeah she says it's an uncharted rebel base what they know about first order record keeping now like whoa. that's right that's right so yeah they must erased? what does it mean to be uncharted how did they know about it i mean i guess i guess it's possible that they know about the rebel base because whenever it was built, they just knew about it. And then, and then if it was never attacked by the first order or the empire, then it's possible that the first order and the empire don't know about it, but they would also have to account for if there are any rebels that defected to the first order or the empire, or even just cargo ships that were like, Oh, there's a base mm -hmm. here. Oh, I'll log it in my log. And then the first order puts it together. Right. Like, the only way they know that the First Order doesn't know it is if mm -hmm. they have a spy on the inside that's like reading the First Order's intel and be like, oh, no, yeah, they definitely don't know. Right. Although that's also a risk because now there's a search log for it. That's right. I was annoyed by once they tell Poe the plan, he's super on board. Like, just, just tell him. Yeah, just why not tell him? It's not, it's not like it was it a controversial plan that right. Poe would have been against. I don't. Tells right, him to on board like immediately he's like oh oh that might work like that's great just do it just do it just tell him so the only reason not to tell poe the plan earlier is probably information compartmentalization okay maybe if there's why would there be a reason is there any other reason not to tell poe there is another reason it's so that holdo can seem like a hero and did it all herself and has all the cards and has all the power but that's what Leia says. She's like, oh, she's more interested in saving the light <laughs> rather than appearing to be a hero. But, the, but then that's, that's what she did. She tried to hero well, it by keeping well, all I the mean, information to herself. Well, from Leia's perspective, Holdo did such a good job at preserving the credit she would be given that Leia doesn't see it. Because that's also Leia's command style. So a big part of getting credit for something is not only getting the credit for it, but giving out the perception that you didn't want the credit to begin with. Oof, and if you can do that without levels. anybody else noticing, perfection. I mean, I guess that is what happened because Leia, because says Holdo does bad job leading, and Leia's like, mm -hmm. "Oh, you're such a good job. You didn't want to, you didn't want to harm your your employees." Like, no, 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 no. like just tell them, <laughs> just tell them. What's the problem? Just tell them, especially your high level guys, because he's a commander of the group. If he knows what yeah. the mission is, then he can perform the mission better. Yeah, yeah. He can come up with ideas to help you. He, like, help he's you. smart. Yeah, he, yeah, he wants fact, to kill stuff, but he's smart. 
he's a critical part of the plan because he's a pilot and he commands other pilots. They leave him out of it. It's, it's I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. It's another one of those moments where I just, just okay. 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 